the true sender and teacher of all holy prophets and of all holy apostles. We thank him and him alone for the way of holiness clearly outlined in scriptures for our learning and for our protection to all of our distinguished guests, all of our brothers and sisters, and of course our ministers, all of you that are standing out there in the hallway area and can't get in, but we thank God for all of you that are here, to all of our viewing audience that are watching. As I said last night, we're webcasting live from Charlotte, North Carolina. So far, 55 were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> God has been good to all of us. It's a beautiful thing to see the brothers and sisters glorify God in spirit and in truth. One brother said to me, he said, out of all of my years of going to church, I've never seen people more excited to go to church to hear preaching than anything else. You know, you have to prioritize and understand that the word of the Lord is the most important part of worship. Without it, you're not really having no church. Just going through preliminary and motion. But the word of God is and shall forever be the most important part of worship. <clears throat> I want to greet all of our brothers and sisters internationally. The bishops in Bali of the African island of Mauritius. Let me say this while I come to mind, Bishop, and to all the saints, please contact me. I need to know uh, whether there's a change in the status of the rule of COVID there so we can prepare for our holy convocation in November of 2022. And if everything is a go, we'll be in the African island of Mauritius and then from there to the African island of Rodriguez, and then from there, we go to Dubai. They'll be with the saints in Dubai, and then Malaysia. And then from there, well, I don't know where I'll end up. Brother sent me a beautiful text out of the saints. I don't know how many it was, but it was like a good crowd was gathered yesterday in the Philippines, watching the webcast live rejoicing over God's eternal word. This thing is far reaching and is doing what the scriptures purpose for it to do. The scripture tells us of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. It looks beautiful, like a flower garden in here. And only God can create something that looks so good. Now, uh, to the saints of God of Charlotte, North Carolina, we, as always, our real estate secretary has been looking for property here, and Charlotte is high. <laughs> so if I can't find nothing in Charlotte, then I will improvise and go outside of Charlotte. Look at, look, look at the volunteers. <laughs> I, I, my secretary contacted me and said she found the place in areas I ain't never heard of, some 30 minutes away from here. Waxhaw, North Carolina, and I, blank, I think it is what, Random in North Carolina, Kannapolis, North Carolina. And so we will be looking into these places and uh, see what we can do and help give Charlotte a good boost. And God willing, next time we'll come back next year, it won't be here in this building because we don't have no room. And yet we can hold many hundreds, but there's no room. So we'll try to get a larger venue, God be our helper. Now let me say this before I dive into the Bible. All of the brothers and sisters of First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ throughout Europe, uh, primarily you that are in the London, England area. Now, <clears throat> I greet Minister Winston and all the brothers and sisters of the truth of God, let me say this to all the brothers 
and the sisters. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. To all brothers, if you ever and sisters have a grievance or disagreement with any of the ministers, never interrupt service. Never be disrespectful. Never get out of place. And don't go playing a tape of Pastor Jennings interrupting the minister while he's ministering and think that justify you. All right. All right. Bible said there's a time and a place for everything. You wait to after service and meet with the minister privately with you and him alone. Well, Pastor Dennis, I got an art. Let's lay down the same rule that Jesus laid with. That's right. Listen. In the book of St. Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 15. I want 15. England to hear this. Amen. Because I don't care who you are. If you're going to be in the truth of God, you're going to follow God orders. That's right. I don't care how old you are, or how young. There's orders that God laid to govern the church. That's right. He saw folks getting out of hand. That's right. Thank God he left things here on record to put everything back in place. That's right. All right, let's listen at this. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 15. <coughs> yes. More, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. Moreover mean this was done constantly. Right. So regardless of how often it's done, if it's done. If it's done. Listen. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. Didn't say he done it. If. If. That's right. If he done it. If. Mm -hmm. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. Yes. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Right. What else? If he shall hear thee. If he shall hear him, thou hast gained thy brother. Then you gain your brother. You don't rise up and interrupt the minister and go interrupt the service because you disagree with what he's preaching about. You sit down. That's right. And don't you cause division. And you sisters in the church in London, you stay in your place. Amen. Don't you take sides with brothers. And then you are a partaker of confusion. That's right. That's right. Now let me say to you brothers who hear Pastor Jennings and the ministers preaching, yet you don't understand what we preach. Hmm. It don't make sense to go try to defend something you don't understand. That's right. All right, let me knock out two scriptures that you fellas are fighting about so I can put you on a straight track. Hmm. One. The Bible says, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is the reasonable service. Right. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When the Bible said, present your body a living sacrifice, it wasn't talking about the church, it was talking about your physical body. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. That's what? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. What should you do? That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Wait a minute. Present your what? Spell bodies. B-O-D-I-E-S. The church is a body. Right. That's right. So the minister was teaching to present your members. He taught it right. And the brother rose up and said, no, you're wrong. He's supposed to present... Talking about the church. No, the church is the body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. That's what? For by one spirit. By one spirit. Are we all baptized. Into what? Into one body. That's the church. That's the church. Present your bodies. Your bodies. Now he's talking about everyone got to present themselves. That's right. Because each individual is a physical body. That's right. You got to present all your members, your eyes, your hands, your feet, everything, everything. as a sacrifice and offer it to God for his glory. That's right. Now, what Williams just read is makes a comparison mm -hmm. in reference to the physical body and the church. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll start at verse 12. That's what? For as the body is one and as many the body members. is one, as the body is one, have a lot of members, eyes, hands, fingers, nose, and all of that. 
What else? And all the members of that one body. All the members of that one body. Being many are one body. Being many are one body. So also so is Christ. Also is Christ. For by one spirit. It's making a comparison. That's right. Your physical body and the body of Christ. That's right. Many members, one people. That's right. So uh, you stay in your place. If you don't, you're going to be ushered out. Yes. All of you ministers and sisters that's causing problems, if you don't get in place now, give me the book of Romans, last chapter. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Amen. Amen. I can't be in England every day, but God knows I can drop it from the air. God be my helper. That's right. And Romans. I'll be there, God willing, next year in person so I can shoot you from the ground. That's right. That's right. Drop it from the air and shoot you from the ground. Amen. That goes for all the churches. If you got a grievance or disagreement with the minister, don't you go getting on social media airing your ignorance. No. Don't you go getting, if the minister have a Zoom meeting, and you can get on that Zoom and be a part of the service without interrupting and acting like a fool, then get off. That's right. That's right. Who gave you the authority to rebuke? God is not the author. Who gave you the authority to correct? Right. Who gave you the authority to chastise? That's right. The Bible said, let every man abide wherein he is called. He's called. That's right. Get me, England. I mean this. That's right. That's right. What if God says what? Now in 1 Corinthians chapter, rather Romans, beg your pardon. Give chapter and verse. Beg your pardon. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. What is it? Now I beseech you, brethren. I beseech you, brethren. Mark them. Mark them. Which cause divisions that and offenses. Divisions that cause problems. And offenses. And they are offensive. Contrary, contrary to the doctrine. to the doctrine. Which ye have learned. Which ye have learned. And, and what shall we do? And avoid them. Why in the world you see? Sisters running hand in hand with brothers. Mm. They not even your husband. What's the matter with you? That's right. Mm. You ain't got no business being that close with some fella in church. That's right. That's right. Do you hear what the word of God says? Now I beseech you, brethren. I want you to get this, London. Amen. Bible said, I beseech you, brethren. Mark them, which cause divisions and offenses. I don't believe in church clicks. No, you don't. Nowhere. That's right. Whether it's in Europe, Canada, America, Africa, Philippines, Ireland, Scotland, New Zealand, Australia, church clicks is for immature children. That's right. You got a grievance with a minister, go to the minister. Go to them. Don't get on internet. Don't get on Zoom. That's right. And then try to play mind tapes. You ain't following what we preach. No. You want to play something? Play this. Mark them. Which, Mark them. Mark them. Which cause. Play that right here. Right. Give the chapter and verse so they can play it. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. Mark them. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary, contrary to the doctrine. Why is it contrary to the doctrine? Because when you finish that, let's lay the foundation of walking by the same rule. Right. Because there's a rule here in the Bible lay rule. Mark them. Mark them which cause divisions which cause division and offenses, offenses contrary to the opposite doctrine. of the doctrine. Which you have learned. Which you got. And avoid them. Walk avoid, hand in hand with them. Avoid them. No. Have a email your grievances to your friends. And avoid them. Backbite the minister. Avoid them. Form a little coup. Think you're going to overthrow the church. Avoid them. If you think you can come in the truth of God and take it over, you're mistaken. You're mistaken. Folks tried that already. That's right. That's right. And good, uh, you don't mind if I just make a little street gesture. Yes. God don't play that. <laughs> That's right. God don't play that. No, no. And we don't play that. Amen. There's an order here. There's an order. And we hold that order in all the churches, all the churches. from East Coast, across the South Pacific. That's right. Across the Atlantic. 
through all the Caribbean. Same order. Same order. Same order in Singapore. Same order Switzerland. Same order United Arab Emirates. That's right. Same order for the Arabian Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful. Same order. Wonderful. For them that are in Ireland. Same order for them. Glory to That's God right. in the Netherlands. Same order for all of Canada. Same order for Alaska. That's right. Same order. That's right. That's right. Same order for Israel. Amen. Same order for Nigeria. Yeah. Same order for the Congo. That's right. That's right. There's nobody allowed to be different from God's word. That's right. And be holy. And be holy. You brothers and sisters there in the First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ in uh, London, you get yourself in order or get yourself out. That's right. All right. Now I beseech you, brethren. You're going to follow what the word of God says if you want to be right. Right. I bet I get another report of you brothers trying to rise up and cause havoc in the church. None of you. That's right. Let everything be done in order. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Don't call me. Call God. Don't call me. <laughs> Amen. 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 The apostle said, give me the book of Corinthians. Let's see what he said he'll do when he comes. Yes. The apostle said, I said all things in order. That's right. When I come, after he itemized the Lord's Supper and itemized the one cup and itemized the wine, he concluded everything that I said all in the things book of in order. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 34. Says what? And if any man hunger, let if him eat at home. If any man hunger, you go home and eat. That ye come not together into condemnation. What is it? And the rest. The rest. Will I set will in I order. Will I set in order. When I come. When I get to you. That's right. Yeah. And this type of stand is what's missing in that's, church now. That's right. Church is America. America around. It's a circus. Right. No discipline. No order. No rule. No rules. Folks think they can come in church and rearrange service till they lack their liking. Not here. Oh, no. We already got a boss, and God is it. That's right. We That's got right. a rule book, and the word of God is it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Ain't no need for no brothers in Europe and jump out and make yourself a preacher and then say, Pastor Jennings is your overseer. I don't know you. <laughs> That's right. No, I don't know you. That's right. There's a lot of imposters are using my name over social media and say they are under Pastor Jennings, and I don't even know you. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 12. We got Bible. Let's get, let's, let's get this. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 12. What is it? And we beseech you, brethren. I want to get your attention, brethren. To know them. Which, to know them. Which labor among you. That labor among you. And are over you in the Lord and admonish you. I want to know you. Know that's, why, that's why we interview that's right. ministers. That's right. Fellas just jump out and use our name because it's known to get followers. Yes. And like there's some crook on internet mm -hmm. who took a picture of me and used my name like I'm corresponding with people over social media. Let me say to all my viewers. Pastor Gino Nicolius Jennings, Amen. born in Temple Hospital, February 10th, 1963, in Philadelphia, and the ungodly country of America. Amen. Don't email nobody Amen. at no time. That's right. I'm not. I don't. I don't use emails. I don't do it. No. I don't even write you. I don't write you. That's right. And I don't email. That's right. I may sit and dictate a letter to my secretary or tell my secretary, look, I need you to send me. But me personally, no. no. I don't have no email account. Amen. I'm busy. Yeah. Preaching gospel. That's right. Some crook over social media. Every time somebody make a comment on our webcast about the message, they'll have my name, Pastor Gino Jennings. And then that crook would say, uh, I don't know you, but uh, beloved, I don't know you. And they go asking for money. 
That's not Geno Jennings. No. I'm no beggar. I'm a preacher. That's right. That's right. You old crook. It's a crook. Amen. So I want all of us to get this. You that is in London, you follow now. And if you think you can't do it, usher him out. Usher him out. Amen. Usher him out. You other brothers, don't you let brothers rise up and disrespect the ministers. That's and right. And interrupt service. That's usher right. them out. Usher them out. And you weak, foolish sisters that would jump up and follow anything with pants, you go somewhere and sit down. Amen. You sit down. Sit down. That's right. Give me the second chapter of the book of Titus here. Amen. In the book of Titus, chapter 2. And Begin we'll start, at verse 1. And we'll start reading at the very first verse. Sisters today want to go word for word and toe to toe with ministers. Yes. They rule their husbands, many of them. Yeah. Husbands ain't got no spine or the wife pushed the husband up to go have a confrontation with the minister. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? When I was a child, I watched a Muppet show. That's right. There shouldn't be no Muppets in the church. No. This is not the Muppet church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. God said, let us make man, yeah. not let us make Muppets. Amen. I'm not Ernie, and he sure ain't Bert. I'm not Bert. No, I'm not Bert, Pastor. And this was missing in church. That's right. Order. Order. Rule. That's right. Discipline. Yeah. It's a madhouse. Yeah. yeah. So we'll take God, and then when we put our holy feet down with Bible, He's a cult leader. <laughs> That's right. He's too strict. I cannot be stricter than what's written. Let all things be done decently. I notice they don't say that when they work for a company, they got rules. Right. Amen. You're going to follow that rule. You know why? You want that check. That's right. Well, if you want eternal life with God, you're going to follow the rules of Scripture. That's right. Can't come in here and lay down your own rule and start your own little clique. And no, 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 no. We don't play that with nobody. No, no. That's Why right. would you waste your time and energy to come in first church just to do that? Just to do that. Why? There's other things to do in life. Oh, yes. That goes for if I got any underground clickers here. That's right. That's right. If I got any little groups in Columbia, in Charlotte, in Florence, and I don't care where you are, I crush you with Bible, God life. knows. That's right. That's right. I don't want the ministers allow themselves to be sucked into a clique. Right. And you ministers' wives. Oh, yes. That's right. That's right. Give me that second chapter of Titus. Titus chapter 2, we'll start at verse 1. Don't worry, I'm going to get back to you. Amen. Get me now. Titus chapter 2, we're at verse 1. What is it? But speak thou the things which become... Speak thou the things... Which become sound doctrine. Uh, that's why the truth of God is so sound. outstanding. That's right. That's right. Sound. Sound doctrine. We're not out to make friends. No. We have to preach what's written here. That's right. I'm not trying to get a popularity contest. No. What do I care about being known? Amen. Amen. I like the days when nobody knew me. Yeah. They were more pleasant. Yeah. Beautiful to go somewhere and nobody know you. That's right. I can't even take a vacation with my wife without somebody knowing me. That's right. Me and my wife can't go out for dinner without somebody got a Bible question. <laughs> I ain't no time for no Bible question. It's time for me to eat. That's right. My wife and I, I can't even go through the airport. Somebody want <laughs> to run up to you, autograph, pictures. Yeah. Can't go into Barnes and Noble. Someone got an undercover camera. Amen. Me and my wife was out to dinner, I don't know how many times. One time a whole group surround our table. Mm. Want to talk about the Bible. Want to tell me how, what God done for them. Want to the, give us their testimony. My wife just looked and just said, mm, oh well. <laughs> But I remember the days where nobody knew me. Yeah. That's a wonderful time. <laughs> Listen at this now. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Sound. Sound. Uncompromising. That's right. No bargaining. That's right. 
All right? That the aged men be sober. Aged men. Amen. Sober, stable-minded. Grave. Uh-huh. Temperate. Self-control. Sound in faith. Unmovable. Sound in faith and charity and patience. Yes. The aged women likewise. <clears throat> all right. The mothers in the church. That's the aged women. That they be in behavior as become All right. Holiness. All right. Here. Here. Yeah. The mothers in the church. There's a way that God said you got to behave as becoming what? As becometh holiness. And that's not gossiping. That's right. No, they, they, don't, they don't like this kind of preaching. No. Hey, man, you were jumping and shouting earlier, but. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Glory to God, I hope you can get your feet up now. Amen. All right. I'm not mean. I love all of you, but I got a job to do so God don't get me. That's right. Do you hear what it says? The aged women likewise. Aged women likewise. That they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Holiness. That means there shouldn't be no mini skirts on the mothers. No. Lipstick on the mothers. Earrings on the mothers. No way. Hey Amen. You got a different, uh, you got about five different hair colors in your cedar closet protected by mothballs. That's right. Take them old hair pieces and wigs and throw them in the trash. Amen. Or bring them to church and give them to me. I set them on fire. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You mean to tell me you're 85 years old and your eyebrows are silver mm -hmm. and your hair is an Indian midnight black? My Lord. Get to dye out your hair. you 70 years old while you're arching your eyebrows. That's right. What are you doing with fake eyelashes about six inches long? Amen. Like you trying to pick a lock with them. Amen. Finger rings and ankle chains on grandma. On grandma. Cutting your blood circulation off that one big vein near your left ankle. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The Holy Ghost. Has. The aged women likewise that they be in behavior. Uh, as becoming this holiness. is old fashioned holiness. Oh yeah. Not this modern junk that claim to be holiness or apostolic that lets you freelance. That's right. Your way into the kingdom. Not here. No, no. No, no, no. No freelancing here. No Do way. You hear what it says? The aged women likewise that they be in behavior. Behave. Behavior. As becoming If a sister holiness. can find in you, then it should be between you and the sister. Right. If a sister talked to a mother in Columbia, then New York shouldn't have the information. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. Get the old man now. Get this. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. As what else? Not false accusers. Not false accusers. Not given to much wine. All that. <laughs> Amen. It says not given too much. So that lets me know she can have some. Right. But now I got to give Bible where she can have some. That's right. That way she don't come in here staggering. Right. And say, well, Pastor Jennifer, I can have it. Right. Glory to God. That's right. Let me show you how. How? The book of Timothy. Yes. Drank no longer water. But use a little wine for thy stomach's sake. Get this now. First Timothy chapter 5 and at verse 23. Let me show you. It says. Drink no drink longer water. No longer water. But, but use, use a little wine. For what? For thy stomach's sake. And for what else? And thine often infirmities. What did it say about the aged women? That. Give chapter and verse. Back in Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. Listen. Not given to much wine. Not too much. So now I have to go to the Bible and show you. Right. You got a stomach condition that calls for little. Little one. Little. That's little. That's right. So little that if you sweat, I don't smell it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So little until if you drink it, you don't even remember you had it. That's right. That's right. Amen. You shouldn't have a, a, a wine chest. That's not little. That's a little too much. <laughs> that's right. All right. Back in Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. What is it? The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. What else? Not false accusers. Not given too much wine. Not given too much wine. Teachers of good things. All right, mother. <clears throat> the Bible said, I, I suffer not a woman to teach nor the use of authority over the man, but to be in silence with all subjection. But now the Bible gives the mother, the aged mother, permission to teach. That's right. One scripture says she can't do it. 
Another scripture says she can. Now, when the Bible's dealing with she can't do it, that's when she's going beyond her boundary and start usurping or exercising authority over the man, and she starts teaching that which is out of her biblical place. That's right. Trying to get him to doctrine him. Trying to open up scripture him. Trying to break down scripture and tell her, thus saith the Lord. But I suffer not a woman to teach. The Bible says in 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. I suffer not the woman to teach, nor. To usurp authority you over the man. You see how we got the balance scripture? But yeah. to do what? But to be in silence. But yet Titus says. That teaches of good things. In chapter and verse, back, I want them to follow me. Back in Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Yes. Not false accusers, not given to much wine. Yes. Teachers of good things. Now tell us who they supposed to teach. That they may teach the young women. Oh. That's right. That's right. Young women. Amen. Amen. You mothers in the church. Do what? That they may teach the young women. To be what? To be sober. Wait well, just a minute. Mother, if you unstable, how are you going to teach your young sister to be sober? Right. If you unstable yourself. That's right. If you're trying to email the old elders in the church, what you going to tell her? Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's right. Be what I said. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Sober, stable minded. Sober. One track mind. That's right. Amen. When I came up, the old mothers was tough. Years ago, a young sister wasn't even allowed to sit on the front row if her dress wasn't long enough. Amen. And if there was no room, the old mothers would get a blanket or something or a big shawl. Throw it over her lap. Amen. Amen. Hide the legs. You know in the churches that got benches, pews, you ever notice that wooden rail go across? Do you know why that was placed in church? Mm -hmm. So no legs won't be seen. Right. All you got to do is get your dress down right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. What did he say? That they may teach the young women to be sober. Be stable-minded. This is supposed to be coming from the mothers. Age, Get the sisters together. That's teach right. them. That's right. Don't keep coming to Brank talking to them about dues, 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 paying dues. Yeah. I don't want to hear nothing about paying no dues. Tell them to do what the Bible says. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. You mean to tell me every meeting you have, you ain't can't discuss nothing but dues? Amen. Tell them to do what the word of God said. That's right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hear the old troublemaker now. That they may teach the young women. I want women. to rub your nose with Bible. Amen. Teach what? That they may teach the young women to be sober. Amen. That are, listen, teach. yeah. That way a lot of you sisters ain't got to keep bugging the ministers in your location. That's right. You got mothers there in the church? That's right. Go to the mothers. Yeah. You got confrontation between you and some other sister. Let the mothers resolve it. That's right. It ain't no, no sister should be running to the ministers. Want to talk to him about problems in the kitchen. Problem who's cooking. That's right. And the minister shouldn't be dumb enough to allow himself to get sucked into it. Amen. Amen. Send them to the mothers. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Give, you, give me Bible passage, Genesis. Sixth chapter of Acts of the Apostle. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the Apostle says. Amen. What, what we should not leave. That's right. And there's no reason to leave it. In the book of Acts chapter 6 and verse 2. Get me. Then the twelve called the multitude then of the, the twelve called the multitude of together. the disciples unto them. And what? And said, it is not reason. It's not reason. That we should leave, we the, should word leave the word of God. And, and do what? And serve tables. It is not reason. So we take God. That's right. <laughs> Eh, it is not reason. No reason that we should leave the word for of us God to stop preaching and serve tables and go dealing with tables and kitchens. <laughs> That's right. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. But what should the minister do? It is not reason that we should leave the word what of God. What should and serve the tables. minister do? Wherefore, brethren, look ye we out give ourselves over. Right. 
to ministry. But we will give ourselves continually to what? prayer. Wait, 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 wait. We give ourselves to do what? But we will give ourselves continually to prayer. And what else? And to the ministry of the word. You brothers stay out the kitchen settling pots and pan differences. That's right. What in the world's wrong with you? <laughs> That's right. If your wife got a confrontation with a sister in the church, you minister, let your wife settle it with the sister. That's right. You get out of it. Get out of it. And if your wife crying on your shoulder about a sister, that shouldn't be, on Saturday night, that shouldn't be your message Sunday morning. Right. Are you listening? You minister wives, you got a grievance with any sister in church. You can talk it over to your husband. That's fine. But the word of God applies to you too. That's right. If you got an ought, that's right. You got to go to them. Go to them. And I don't care if you are the minister wife. If you can't obey that, sit down. That's right. And you ministers, if your wife is gossiping and in everybody business, and you can't correct your wife, you sit down. That's right. Give me the third chapter yes. of First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 3 and at verse 4. That's what? One that rules well his own house. One that rules well his own house. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. Under subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not if a how, man don't know how to rule his own to house, control his own house, how shall how he take can care he of take the church care of God? God's house? That's right. How shall he? Amen. You preachers, wives, your name shouldn't come up in every piece of gossip no because way. you are part of it. That's right. Mind your business. That's right. Leave everybody else's business alone. That's right. And with all they learn and to yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you ministers, I mean this. Yes. Your wife can cry on your shoulder, crocodile tears, that's fine. That's right. But if she got a grievance with the sister, that's not for you to rectify. Yeah. She got to comply with the word of God oh, like God. anybody else. She got to go to him. Right. And if she going to cry on your shoulder Saturday and that's your message Sunday, brother minister, you are a hypocrite. That's right. Not only are you a hypocrite, you're a striker. Yeah. First chapter of the book of Titus. First Titus, that's right. Titus chapter 1. Begin at verse 1. At verse 1. Get Paul, this. Paul, a servant of God. Paul, a servant of God. And an apostle of Jesus and Christ. And an apostle. Amen. An apostle. Of Jesus Christ. According to the faith of God's elect. What? And the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. What is it? In hope of eternal life which God that cannot Promise lie. before the world began had make manifest his word through preaching. Which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Titus. Savior's. Mine own son after the common faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. What's the result? For this cause left I thee in Crete. That what? That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. And ordained. Elders in every city as I had appointed What's thee. What's the criteria? If any be blameless. What else? The husband of one Wife, what else? Having faithful children, not accused of right or unruly. What else? For a bishop must be blamed. What else? As the steward of God. What else? Not self will You got to be able to take this hard gospel. That's right. Amen. What else? Not soon angry. You can't get mad quick. Not given to wine. No wine for you. No striker. What? No striker. So when you went with yeah, when your wife comes whining and all that about some sister or a group of sisters, and now you want to strike out at those sisters Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. You fail your qualification. Amen. No striker. No striker. And you ministers, if a sister or, or people are talking to you in council, it's supposed to stay in the office. That's right. And don't get up here and lie and say, the Lord moving me to tell your business. No, you're just a liar. <laughs> That's right. Don't take sides with your wife. Is she wrong? Yeah. And you minister's wives, I don't care if you are a minister's wife. Don't think because you're a minister's wife that the mothers cannot correct you. That's right. If the mothers can't correct my wife, who in the world are you? Yeah. Amen. 
Any minister wife thank you above correction, you in the wrong church. Yeah. That the word of God said that the mothers teach these women that goes for the minister wives. That's right. That's right. And you brothers that got the preaching itch that is married, and you think you're the only one that can correct your wife, you better get up. Don't look at the pulpit. That's right. Oh, no. If your wife get wrong openly and you can't chastise her openly, you better not bother nobody else. That's right. Amen, amen. You get me? Amen. You ministers, if your wife get wrong openly and you cannot correct her openly, then shut your mouth and don't say nothing to no other sister. That's because right. you got favoritism. Yeah. And he that got respect the person commits sin. Commit sin. Amen. This is old school holiness. That's right. That's right. Matter because you're a minister wife. That's all right. You're still a sister. Still a sister. That's you're right. just a sister. That's right. No prestige. No. Just a sister. I listen to the old man. That's right. I'm going to talk that talk and I'm going to walk that walk. Amen. Yes, <laughs> hey, That's right. Back to Titus. What did he say? Back in Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. That's what? The aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. What is it? Not false accusers. Not false accusers. Not giving too much Not wine. Not giving too much wine. Teachers of good things. Teachers of things that's good. That they may teach the young women to oh, be sober. See, the mother's got a job to do. Oh, yeah. It ain't just speaking in tongue and having meetings to discover what, to, to keep talking about wearing all white. <laughs> That's right. You can tell me every time you got a meeting, the only thing you can discuss is wearing white at a convention. Yeah. And all these hundreds of young sisters we have. That's right. You don't have a sister's meeting to give your opinion. No. The mother's been not bring nothing that deviates from what they've been taught. That's right. You bring something that deviates from what you're being taught, you, you, you're, not, you're not in a, an advisory capacity. No. That's my right. job is to check on all food that's being distributed. <laughs> that's right. And make sure we all walk by the same rule. Same rule. rule. Amen. Amen. Sister May come in and got earrings on. Don't you tell her to take them off. Let God do it. Let God do it. Well, Pastor Jennings, earrings is wrong. I know it. But let the word clean her up. That's right. God didn't tell you to clean her up. That's right. The word do it. That's right. You see, when God do it, before God hit her ear, he hits her heart. Yeah. When you do it, you attack the ear. That's right. And don't touch the heart. That's right. But when God do it, he go around the ear and go to the heart. And when she's convicted, she'll take them off herself. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. In other words, when she come into the church, she may have a wig on, paint brushes for eyelashes, somebody else's lips. Everything. Everything. You can't scale a fish till you catch it. That's right. Leave her alone. In other words, let God do his job. That's right. And you do yours. And you ministers, if you are teaching about the resurrection, then all of a sudden a woman come in with earrings, and the moment you saw her, you switch your message from the risen Christ <laughs> to no outward adorning, you're going to target that one woman? Yeah. You're not in the spirit, you're in the flesh. That's right. That's right. Let God clean them up. Amen. And when God clean them up, he'll do it at his own time while she run at the right pace. That's right. No preacher shall ever tell you, as long as you've been in church, you should have 
done this by now or that by now or you've been you've been tarrying for five years you should have been had the holy ghost who are you to tell me you? when i should have had something that's right holy ghost is a gift that's right all i can do is ask for it yes. that's all you preachers are wrong to tell anybody You've been tired for 10 years. You ain't been doing nothing. How you gonna tell me that? The Lord says, Terry, Terry until, until. until. That's all I can do. That's right. That's right. God says, they that wait. Wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They that wait. That's right. How long? I don't know. Oh. But they that wait. Yes. On the Lord. That's right. Come on, take off. That's right. Shall renew they yes. shall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to wait on them. That's you can't tell me how long to wait. He says, tarry. Tarry until. 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 I just can tarry until God give it. So you that's in these churches who are being insulted. Yeah. And the preacher's going to tell you. You've been tired for 15 years. You should have been having it. You can't tell me. No. You're not the giver of the Holy Ghost. That's right. This is a gift that comes from God. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. So you mothers that see these sisters come in, pants on, all that, don't, don't leave them alone. <laughs> but Pastor Jenny, they got to be right. Then let God make them right. You do your job and let God do his. That's right. Are you listening? That they may teach the young women to be sober. Stable minded. To love their husbands. Hmm. That's if you have one. That's right. That's right. Some of the ones that have them, it's hard to love that devil. Amen. In order for the mother to teach the sister how to love their husbands, yeah. they got to have knowledge of what love is. Right. Yes, That's right. Mm -hmm. That they may teach the young women to be sober. What else? To love their husbands. Love their husbands. To love their children. Teach your children how to sit down in church. Yes. Not running around all the time. That's right. Every time, in and up, up and down, up and down. One of the best methods to teach your child when it's young, give him or her a sit-down period at home. Yeah. I don't mean sit down playing with a cell phone. Sit down, That's right. do nothing. That's right. That's, that's the old school way. Yeah. What are you doing? You're training them discipline. Right. And that way when they get in a public place, they know how to sit down. That's right. Mm hmm That's right. Come on, son. To love their husbands, to love their love children. Love their husbands, love their children. To be discreet. Discreet. Tell all your information. To be discreet. Now, get on social media and advertise your stupidity. To be discreet. You so-called holy sanctified people that got your own Facebook, it shouldn't be trash on there the size of, an, uh, of, of, an, of a roach's baby toe. That's right. That's right. Your past trash shouldn't be on there. And Amen. you shouldn't have no present trash to put on there. Amen. Social media gonna cause folk to go to hell. Yeah. You have an argument, your argument shouldn't be on social media. No. You have a grievance, your grievance shouldn't be on social media. That's right. Jesus said between you and them alone. 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 That's right. The Holy Ghost says what? To be discreet. Be discreet. Chase. Clean. Keepers at home. Know how to keep your house in order. Good. Be a good woman. That's right. Mm -hmm. Obedient. Not a good fool. Amen. Good woman. Good. Obedient. Obedient to their own husbands. Hold it. Hmm. Amen. Doesn't matter if you're the minister, wife. If you get unrolling, then the minister can sit you down. That's right. 
I don't care if you go to position in church. If she needs to be sit down, sit her down. That's right. And if she say, you can't sit me down, uh, I'm your wife. That's all the more reason. Sit down. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Your wife is unruly. You ain't got to ask me what should you do. No. Sit her down. Sit her down. And if you see your wife unruly and you sit back, brother, and you don't do nothing, then you sit down. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 20. And, yeah, 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 yeah. If one of the mothers tie into your wife and your wife go complain to the husband who's the minister, and then the minister going to get up and lay one of the mothers out, then I'm going to sit the minister down. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. anytime time you think your wife is part of the untouchables. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. You think your wife is part of the untouchables, Miss Mrs. Elliot Ness or Miss Frank Nitty? Not here. Oh no. Not here. Amen. First Timothy chapter five and at verse twenty. Here I'm, your, here I'm your overseer, and my wife don't even think that way. No. My wife don't think that way. No. 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 See how quiet it is. Yeah. Nobody speaking in tongues. Ain't nobody even hardly saying hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is, this, is a, this is a good soaking message yet. That's right. Pastor Paul said, I put all things in order when I come. When I come. What is it? First Timothy chapter 5 and at verse 20. All right. Them that sin. Well, here, give chapter and verse again. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 20. Them. Them that sin. That sin. Rebuke before all yeah. that others also may fear. Are you listening? Oh, yes. The word of God says, Them that them sin, them that's wrong, rebuke before lay all, them out that, before everybody, that others also may fear. Now, preacher, how are you going to rebuke I someone? charge thee before God. Wait a minute. How, how, how strong is the Apostle Paul laying this groundwork? I charge thee before God. You give chapter and verse. First Timothy chapter 5, now we're at verse 21. I charge thee. I charge the thee Apostle before Paul God. Teaching his son in the gospel, Brother Timothy. That's right. Who he lay hands on to stir up the gift of evangelism that was in him. That's right. I charge you before God. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. What is it? And the elect angels that thou observe these you mean things. To, you, mean, you mean to tell me? Your mm -hmm. husband is a minister. He's talking to you in church. Mm -hmm. And you're going to want to mouth him in the public before everybody? Wave your hands in his face. And you do that in the presence of the church? Of the church. One of the mothers that see you up there say, hey, wait, hey, just a minute, sister. You better go on back there. What's the matter with you? That's right. That's right. Some of you gossip too much, you talk too much, you in everybody's business. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Minister wife. Mm. Mm. I, I think she got a little, I think she straightened her hair a little. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry about her hair. Amen. Worry about your own. That's right. Amen. Not being so busy buying other people matter. Amen. Amen. Let the word deal with her. That's right. She straightened her hair a little, and you arch your eyebrows. Mm. And here the Bible's crashing both. Both. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You hear the cricket? Very quiet, Pastor. <laughs> Very oh, quiet. Go. This, this is church here. Yes, it is. Churches have been abandoned this kind of teaching years ago. Oh, yes. From pulpit down. That's right. Preachers' That's right. wives be running wild like wildebeest. In everybody business, back talking to everybody, flirting in every man's face, not discreet, no shame, no faceness, shame. nothing. Nothing. That's right. Are you getting me? I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I charge thee. Amen. Before God Lord and the God Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, and the elect angels. And the elect angels. That thou observe these things without preferring. Wait a minute. Amen. 
How close should we pay attention to them? That thou observe these things. Observe these things. Without preferring one before another. Without having respect to person. Doing nothing by partiality. Do nothing. Doing nothing by partiality. With favoritism. That's right. Nothing. nothing. Do you hear? That's right. Nothing. Doing nothing by partiality. With favoritism. Amen. That's right. Don't you ministers know sometimes a person will test you? Yeah. They'll have a conference with you that they don't need. That's you true. see, do you know how to tell it? Keep information. That's right. And then all their business come out over the pulpit because you, they told you, and then they sending me letters. <laughs> That's right. You see, in every temple, we have what is called minister's evaluation forms. The Bible says it's reported commonly among you. Yes. And the people talk to you, then it's supposed to be between you and them. Yeah. Not for you to have a session, the next thing you know is all over the pulpit. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19. Now, let's look at the Bible, just laying, laying the foundation here. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19 and verse 7. This is Ecclesiastes, or the book of Sarah, chapter 19 and verse 7. Begin Re at verse 6. At verse 6. Listen. He that can rule his tongue. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's right. It came out holy. <laughs> I was saying, I was trying to say holy and hallelujah at the same time, and it came out hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, the new word, Pastor. Uh, <laughs> the word of God says, He that can rule his tongue, he that can discipline his mouth, shall live without strife. Amen. One scripture says, He that keep his mouth, keep his life. Keep his life. What if God said what? He that can rule his tongue. He that can rule. His tongue. His tongue. Shall live without strife. Live without strife. Live without confrontation. And he that hateth babbling. He that hate a bunch of talk that ain't worth nothing. Shall have less evil. That means you will you have less problems coming your direction. That's but if right. your mouth is in everybody's business, you opened up the door for problems. That's right. Rehearse not unto another. That which is told unto thee. Amen. Amen. Do you hear it? Ecclesiasticus chapter hear 19. Chapter verse again. In the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 19. Rehearse. Not unto not another. unto another. That which is told unto thee. And thou shalt fare never the worse. Whether it be to a friend or foe, talk not of other men's lives. Amen. Are you listening? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, now at, at verse 8. Glory to God. Whether it be to a friend, to or, a friend or foe. Talk, or an enemy. Talk not, talk not of other men's lives. Of other men's lives. And if thou canst without offense. If you can without offense. Re reveal them not. Re don't, re don't make it known. For he heard and observed thee. And what? And when time cometh, he will hate thee. And? If thou hast heard a word, let it die with thee. Amen. Amen. You know, a gossiping woman is bad, but a gossiping man is worse. That's right. When you get a grown man want to get in everybody's business and mind everybody's business. He's on so social media is, is, is self-destruction to many. Yeah. It had ruined the lives of many, had destroyed marriages, everything. Everything. People use social media to destroy people they don't even know. That's right. That's right. Don't believe everything you hear. No. Because you may end up being a liar based upon repeating lies. That's right. Go back to Titus quickly now. Come on. Back in Titus chapter 2 and at verse 5. Be quick. To be discreet. Be discreet. Chase. Chase. Keep us at, Keep home. Us at home. Good. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. That what? That the word of God be not that blasphemed. That God's word be not blasphemed. Young men, likewise exhort to be sober minded. All right, you young men, you be sober. That's right. Be sober. Don't you be proposing to about five different sisters in three months. That's right. You don't start your own form of evangelism. Amen. Like a sister down south, like a sister in Connecticut, like a sister in the Bahamas, like a sister in Africa, like a sister in Dubai, That's like right. a sister in London, yeah. and trying to like one in Damascus. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. Get men. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. You was about to walk to the altar and get married in January. And all of a sudden the relationship fell apart. And now you're about to walk to the altar with somebody else by April. By April. You don't know what love is. No. You don't know what love is. No. You a test driver. That's right. That's you right. one of them test driving dummies. That's right. That's right. A test driving dummy. Amen. You know, car companies, before they put real people in cars, they put a test driving dummy. That's right. That way they can let it crash as much as they want. Yeah. Then a dummy fall apart. That's right. That's why many brothers are there, test driving dummies. Yeah. And some of you sisters are dumb enough to be test driven. Mm. Go ahead. You believe every dumb thing some brother tell you. Yes. All he got to do is act like he in the spirit and do the boogaloo. That's right. <laughs> Get in the spirit, do the boogaloo. Yes, 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 yes. That's, the Lord. That's right. You think he's in the anointing. In the anointing. <laughs> Doing the boogaloo. Amen. Amen. How in the world are you going to fall in love with about five women in one year? In a year. You a gigolo. That's right. That's not love, that's pimpism. Yeah. And you single sisters, stop allowing yourself to get knocked up by these men that already got about 25 children and they won't even take care of none of them. That's right. That's right. You men don't go tipping out of here now. That's right. Don't go putting that hump in your back now. No, no. Huh? Go walking out of here now. That's right. Might as well come on back. Come on back. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? <laughs> To be rocking babies for two-legged roaches. That's right. That just drop sperm in your womb like men drop money in banks. Go ahead. Talk back to me. Go ahead. Amen. You got the result to sexual preferences. Yes, to keep a man, you will never keep him. Never. never. Because there's somebody may outperform you. Right. She may walk on her hands. Yeah. He ain't never seen that before. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He used to see her walk on her legs come to him. All of a sudden, she's on her hands coming. He's like. Amen. <laughs> Do you understand? That's right. If you fell victim to good sounding words and a fake tongue that you thought he had some Holy Ghost. And he just wanted to maneuver his way into your life to dismantle your life. That's right. Now you giving him money. Now you paying his rent. Now you paying his electric. Now you paying his water. Now you paying his gas. Now you buying his clothes. That's right. And after he done gathered all that from you, he gone. He's gone. 
That's right. He's a church going leech. Yeah. He gonna move on to the next one. So stop thinking everything that move is the Holy Ghost. That's right. Boogaloo. That's right, Mook. They're doing the boogaloo. Remember that. Amen. You know, old timers remember that. It used to be a dance back in the day called the boogaloo. That's right. That's what some of these folks doing. They ain't got no Holy Ghost, just doing the boogaloo. And sisters think, oh my God, he's so filled with God. He's doing the boogaloo. boogaloo. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter name. 11. This type of preaching protect the naive. That's right. He said, you've been going to these churches called apostolic, learning about Jesus and God was manifesting the flesh. If there's one God, he offered the body through the eternal spirit, but there's more than that. More than that. You busy worrying about the enemy attacking you out there, you better pay attention right here. Right here. Right here. That's right. Jesus said, beware of wolves. Beware of wolves. And sheep clothing. That's right. That's right. Right here. Right here. That's right. Sweet talk you out. And next thing you know, you don't propose. Or you saying the same thing to about 30 different sisters. Yeah. Are you listening? In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11 and at verse 33. Ecclesiasticus, or the book of Sirius, chapter, chapter 11, verse 3. Begin at verse 1. At verse 33. All right, uh, begin at verse 33. Take heed chapter of the... Chapter 11 and verse 33. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11 and verse 33. Begin at verse 30. At verse 30. All right. Like as a partridge taken and kept in a cage. Yes. So is the heart of the prayer. Yes. And like as a spy... Watcheth he for thy fall. All right. For he lieth in wait and turneth good into evil. He lieth in, in wait, wait and turneth good into evil. He turned evil. good into evil. And in things worthy praise in will lay blame upon worthy thee. Worthy praise is what? Will lay blame upon thee. Lay blame upon thee. Of a spark of fire, a heap of coals is kindled. Yes. And a sinful man layeth wait for blood. Uh -huh. At verse 33. All right. Take heed of a mischievous man, for he worketh wicked. Hold it. Amen. All right, you shouting, sisters, just cool down a little bit now. Take heed. Just hold it down now. <laughs> That's right. I want to talk to you. Hold it, hold it down. Listen good. Listen, take, pay attention. That's right. The Holy take, Book says. Take heed of a mischievous man. Don't go looking outside in the world. That's right. Everything that shine ain't gold. No. You got mischievous men that come right to church. That's right. Don't you forget Judas was hanging with Jesus. That's right. He was hanging around that. Around. And this is the problem with a lot of preachers. They always preach the devil from outdoors. As if he's always hanging around outside. That's right. Most of the devils that be on the inside be right up in the pulpit. That's right. That's right. The holy book says. Take heed of a mischievous man. Pay attention yes. of a mischievous man. Man. For he worketh wickedness. He let, work wicked. Lest he bring upon thee a perpetual blot. Lest he bring upon you a perpetual blot. Meaning he will toss you into shame. That's right. He will embarrass you. That's right. Do I hate the day you ever wrote his phone number. Yes. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Receive a stranger into thine house and he will disturb thee. And Hold it. Amen. <laughs> let me enlarge on that. Amen. Pastor Jennings, I don't let strangers in my house. You sure? Please don't narrow house to where your address is. Yeah. Look at your house as your body. Your body. The word of God say this earthly house of this tabernacle that'll be it is dissolved. That's right. We have another not made with hand, but eternal in the heavens. That's right. So have have you ever allowed a stranger mm. in your house? Into that. Into the Pastor Jennings, I, I don't know what you mean. Have you ever opened your door? Right. And invited a stranger 
Someone you don't know. Because they come to church, that don't mean you know them. No. You know, you can be around someone 40 years and still don't know them. That's why some folks say, you know, I want a relationship where there's never no disagreements. Even cartoons fight. That's right. So what you asking for ain't going to happen. That's right. Let me give you wisdom. You were coming up in the hood, we had a saying, I got your back. The true test of having your back is not when it's peace. That's right. It's when there's a conflict. Now, if there's more than one person, the person either say they got your back, is going to have your back, or you're going to see his back running down the street. Amen. Amen. So when I came up and said, yo, we got your back. Oh, man. Let's mix it up. When I look to my side, my rollie is right there. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And then there was some, you know. I saw his back. I saw the heels of his feet. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Gone. Yeah. Friction manifests what is internally suppressed. That's right. Friction manifests what's internally suppressed because friction brings heat. Yeah. Argument. Heat. And sometimes what's in her heart or in his heart, it takes heat or an argument to say what he really think of you. That's right. That's right. Or what she really think of you. You may say, you make me want to go back to my, own, to my, my old boyfriend. Really? Yeah. He make you? Did your boyfriend just pop up in your mind then? That's right. Or were you not thinking about the jolly green giant for a while? Amen. My Lord. Relationship. Doesn't matter how heated you get, sister. Never. Compare your husband. To someone you used to deal with. That's right. Brother, never compare your wife with someone you used to deal with. Yeah. 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 And then gonna say, trust you? Yeah. I'm a work. Are you listening? Amen. Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind me. But for you to forget them, you got to be detached from them. Right. That's right. You can't forget what you're not detached from. That's I know right. the Bible said forgetting, but it don't mean just, oh, yeah, I'm absent-minded. No, you remember. Yeah. But you can remember the past, but you have overcame the past. Yeah. Right. And your thought of the past have no effect on you in the present That's right. because you overcame it you overcame it mentally until it don't dwell on your mind and cause a, a depression you right. overcame it emotionally it doesn't affect you and cause you to start a confrontation and you overcame it physically until it don't pull you to go back to where you came from that's right are you listening that's right so you don't want these fairy tale relationships where there's no, no disagreement, no. Arguments has its place. Because it shows where your relationship really is and where it's on the verge of going. That's right. And it also will tell you in many cases the real truth about whether it's even a relationship or a drive-by. Right. That's right. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. What did the Holy Ghost say here? Receive a stranger into thine house, and he will disturb thee. And that's what happened to a lot of women and a lot of men. Yeah. 
you looked at she was baptized and had the Holy Ghost. You looked at he was baptized and said he had the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But you didn't wait to know him. What is the true knowledge of a person? True knowledge of that individual is when you know the heart, the heart. of that man or that woman. Because the heart never lies. It doesn't matter what facade you see every day. That's not the real person. The real person is the unseen. Right. The heart is the only part of the body that always tell the truth. Yes. That's I right. don't care who they are or what they are. That's right. Because where the heart is, is where the real thoughts real and the thoughts. real emotion is. Be it love or hate. Yeah. You can marry your enemy. That's right. But your enemy camouflage him or herself as your best friend. Yeah. And if you don't wait and take your time, you think you're marrying your soulmate. Before right. you declare them to be your soulmate, don't you think you should know what your soul is? Yeah. You can marry your enemy. Yes. You could be marrying your destruction. Though he humble himself. Though he humble himself. And go crouching. And go crouching. Yet take good heed and beware of him. You better pay attention and beware of him. And then shalt thou be unto him. And then shalt thou be unto him. As if thou hadst wiped a looking glass. And what? And thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12, and that was at verse His rust and that have his rust not has been altogether wiped away. Wiped away. Rust is what deteriorates that machinery or that metal, right. that car. That's right. It's not altogether wiped away. Wiped away. So sometimes when they fix a car, if they don't get all the rust yeah. and remove it, yeah. repair, if they leave some there, what they leave, they're going to start eating up the rest. That's right. So what baggage is he or she bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. Covered rust. Never Some rust is painted over. That's right. But in due time, even rust bleeds That's through right. the paint. Yeah. My job as a teacher is to get you to see the rust through the paint. That's right. And to do that, you can't allow yourself to get so emotionally blind by the paint color. That's right. That's right. Now, this is the mistake that some brothers and sisters make. Well, Pastor Jennings, he is not what I want, but I'm just going to settle. You's a fool. That's a fool. <laughs> Pastor Jennings, she ain't really what I want, but... What I want ain't out there. You mean to tell me you think that little of yourself? Yeah. That you will settle for what you really don't you want? Don't. Most people have been told in life, marry who you want. What we teach, you should have the who and the what. That's right. Because you can have who you want, but they ain't what you want. What you want. And you can have what you want, but it ain't from who you want. That's right. That's right. So don't you think you should have the who and the what? And the what. When you have the who and the what, you got a total package. If you got who, but what you want lives somewhere else. And because they're too far, you just settle for who. But your what is in another state. That's right. That's right. So now you got what you want, but who you want is in the north. Yeah. And what you want, you married in the South because he was closer. <laughs> That's right. And either way, you're not going to be happy. Yeah. Because you're going to lay with who and think about what. Mm. Are you listening? Or you're going to lay with what? And your mind going to be on who? Are you listening to the old man? That's right. That's so right. how much do you value yourself? How much do you love yourself that you will insult your own integrity? Not marry, interested in someone, and yet you're saying, man, they, they're not really what I want. Yeah. You know? I'm getting older. You mean to tell me you're that desperate for marriage? You counting the clock? 
and you going to settle and punch out? Punch out. And you still ain't satisfied? That's right. Buy him your wedding gown, got your hope chest. He's getting this tux and no down within. He don't want her. He don't want her. She got the build. She got the shape. She's curvaceous. <laughs> She's curvaceous. Are you listening? Amen. So she got the curve. She got the height. She got the feminine character, which is very rare in women today. Oh, man. You see, a lot, and most men don't know nothing about femininity. Right. Most women, get, most men be looking at, oh, man, she, she's built, brother. She's put together. Like she's been stacked in a warehouse somewhere. <laughs> no femininity, not feminine, nothing. Nothing. And most men don't look for that. All right. She is what? But internally, she lacked the who. Yeah. So what good is having that beautiful package? And it's an embarrassment. Sister, what good is having that beautiful looking exterior package? That's right. And he's not a man. That's right. He's weak in being responsible, incompetent in being responsible. Yeah. Unstable as water. As water. 49th chapter of the book of Genesis, quick. Yes. Give him the 49th chapter of the book of Genesis. Jacob was about to die, and he called his sons together. Yeah. He examined Reuben, Issachar, Dan, Levi, Simeon, and Benjamin, and Joseph, and all the sons. Yes. But look at what he said about his firstborn son. Re uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter 49, and verse 3. Parliament. Reuben, thou art my firstborn. Reuben, you're my firstborn. My might. You're my might. And the beginning of you my strength. You are the beginning of my strength. The excellency the of dignity. The excellency of dignity. And the excellency of power. He complimented his firstborn. He complimented his eldest son. Yes. But then there was a problem. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. He was unstable as what? Unstable as water. And what happened? Thou shalt not excel. If a brother is unstable, unstable. brother, 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 Brother. you suppose to be the seer of your house. Yeah. You're the one that's supposed to have a vision for your family. That's right. If you marry a woman who loves to get things accomplished, yeah. love to go, as old folks say, forward. That's right. Love to go forward, love to excel, but yet you are content with barely making it. Barely. Let me make a brutal, raw example. There are some that got the money to pay their bills, but out of habit, they won't pay them. <laughs> they just pay on them. That's right. They lay away their bills. Yeah. Just pay on them. They got the money to pay them. But then you marry someone who's used to paying that bill. Get it out the way. If the money's there, let's take care of that first. That's right. See, if you're going to marry someone who don't have structure, you can't go into marriage with a childlike mentality. Amen. If you go into marriage with a childlike mentality, you are mentally and emotionally unequipped. Right. To marry because now the family will perish as a cause of lack of vision. Yeah. Let me make an example. If you got a two bedroom an apartment, two bedroom apartment, and you got 30 kids, <laughs> and you can afford a house, you can, but you're content with. Just being there. You can tip with things the way they are. Your wife shouldn't have to put fire up under you and say, look, 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 we, we need to get out of here. That's right. And he's saying, well, I know, but what's wrong with this? Yep. And she's like, what do you mean? <laughs> we have no room. He said, well, I got enough room. <laughs> That's right. But you didn't marry yourself. 
Right. So when you say I this, I that, I the other, when you get married, you can't look at it solo no more. And this is where many are unprepared for marriage. Brothers that are single who got a mind to get married, you can't keep buying suits. That's right. Shoes. That's right. And you got a mind to marry, you got to lay something aside to prepare a place for her. Yeah. That where you are, she may be one day. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 4. Proverbs 20 and 4 says, The sluggard will not plow. Wait, 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 wait. Read it plain. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 4. Says what? The sluggard. The sluggard, the lazy. Will not The bum. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Sluggard. If you didn't understand what the slugger is, the bum. <laughs> Amen. The bum, I said. The sluggard. If you don't understand what slugger is, I know you know what a bum is. Amen. The bum will not plow, will not work by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. Man, when you take care of family, you got to work all year round. Yeah. A man that's a real, ain't no man feel like working all the time. No way. But the love that he has for his house makes him do it. That's right. That's right. Sister, you mean to tell me you want to marry a man and all he want to do is have sex? Yeah. No food come in the house. Children got to argue with him about taking, even the children got to argue with him about taking care of them. Yeah. And he's satisfied being a bum. That's right. A bum is bad. A content bum. Yes, yes. When you are a content bum, That's right. that means you are content. You're satisfied in your study of bumology. That's right. You're a bumologist. That's right. Somebody said, what work you do? Well, I took several courses in bumology. Bumology. And uh, I, I'm a bumologist. That's right. Everywhere I go, I bum. I'm a bum. A bum. That's right. And there are some people like that. A slowful man. Oh, listen here in the book of Proverbs. Now in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 24. And sister, don't be the type of woman that disgrace yourself and use a man because he do have money. You just as bad too. Just as bad. You know, I counsel with hundreds. Amen. And today's generation that got in mind to get married, very few bring up the subject of love. Amen. It's sad when I got to bring it up. <laughs> what you hear is money. That's right. I want to I wanna marry a man and make this amount a year, that amount a year, that amount a year. All right, that's well and good. Brothers, consider this. If a sister is already independent, she working, got a good job, career, she's self-established. And this is something that a lot of the so-called apostolic churches don't teach. They do not encourage their sisters or women to get an education. That's Listen, right. let me give you some brutal news. But yet it's true. Years ago, many of the old-time so-called apostolics taught sisters you couldn't be doctors. You couldn't be nurses. You could not be engineers. You could not be lawyers. You couldn't, if you get a job, a secretary or a maid, right. waitress, and that's it. In fact, one bishop taught that education was equal to idolatry. Now, to all my young sisters that's not married, stop waiting for a man to do for you what you can do for yourself. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. I mean, if you run up on a man and, he, and it's rare today. Oh, yeah. And he's a knight in shiny armor, and it's real armor. Real armor. <laughs> real armor, not plastic. That's right. Now he got a bunch of... And he got a bunch of boxes to tape them together. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? A man that has that old foundation where he loves his family, he work and take care of his family. 
That's good. It is rare. <laughs> but you don't sit around when you got your hands and your mind and you refuse to sharpen your skills. And you young? That's right. What's going to happen? Foes the knight in shiny armor, rust set in his armor. That's right. Or he leave you with five kids, and Sister Susan come by with no kids, and her hips swing him out your arm. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. Remember what I said earlier? She may walk on her hands. <laughs> Glory right, right, to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you want to go to college, Today's society, the availability is easy. Yeah. Even if you got kids, you can take courses online. That's right. But you don't take your God-given skill and suppress it. So the so-called apostolics taught it was a sin to be educated. That's right. That's right. How, how old is my brother? Seventy-nine. 79. Man, you seventy-nine? Mm. <laughs> he don't look it. Now, he came from under Bishop R.C. Lawson. That's right. Bishop R.C. Lawson was Bishop S.C. Johnson's bishop. Yeah. Bishop R.C. Lawson was the one that ordained Bishop Johnson and made him a bishop and overseer of the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Johnson left, left Lawson in 1930. Oh, but right. here's an old schooler who came from that's under right. Lawson. Now, Lawson died in 61, five months after Bishop Johnson. Johnson died February. Lawson died, I believe it was July the same year. But many of them old-time apostolics did not believe that a woman should be educated. And many of our young sisters in their teens, in their 20s, in their 30s, wanted to broaden their mind and simply learn. Hallelujah. Now, how can you say it's a sin for a woman to have education, but not a sin for a man to have right. education, right. and then preach that God have no respect to person? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 Right. Now, brothers, what kind of man are you? that you would not want your wife to be educated. That's right. In some cases, the woman can handle the money better than you. Yeah. It don't take away from your manhood. That's right. If you don't know how to manage the bills and she do, let her. Yeah. If she know business better than you, then listen to her. Right. It don't take from your manhood. That's right. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. So why you wouldn't want your wife to have knowledge? We encourage our young sisters in their teens and 20s. This is what I used to do before I met most of you. God willing, I'm going to go back to it. When the young folk would be in school, elementary, middle school, high school, and college, they had to bring their report cards here. That's right. My Lord, my Lord. That's right. And we read them before really? the entire congregation. Yeah, yeah. And if you failed, I ain't wait for your mama and father to ground you. Uh -uh. I ground you. Amen. And encourage your parents to stand behind my decision. Yes. Right. Yes. You can't bring home a bunch of F's and say that's for favoritism. 
<laughs> really? I need to go back to that, don't I, Jones? Don't be afraid of self-improvement and self Development. You ought to thank God right. you got a leader that's pushing you, pushing you to make something out of yourself. Wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. You apostolic that taught women it's a sin to be educated. You're liars. Yeah. Including your bishops and your so-called apostles. Amen. I have Hundreds of secretaries. You better be educated. Educated. Amen. That's right. When I want to see them books, I don't want to see tic tac toe. And here I got an accounting firm. Yeah. They have to evaluate the books of the entire organization. Right. Even though I have accountants and all of that within, law says it's a conflict of interest. So to tweak our books, I have to go outside of the church. Right. That's right. That's right. I have to go outside the church because by law, by law, we cannot have someone to over or to tweak our books and all. No, no, no. We have to get a, a firm, an accounting firm, yeah. an audit outside. Yeah. To look at every penny. That's right. And when I tell the secretaries, all right. Your report got to be in by April 5th. Then I expect for all the financial secretaries in America, I don't care if it's 1,000 of them, to be on time to have that report in. Why? The law of God says obey magistrates. 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 And the church got to have accountability. So I encourage my brothers and sisters. Sometimes they come to me, what do you think is a good career to get in, Pastor Jennings? And I always tell them, get in something that's always in demand, that don't violate the scriptures and see how you can help the church with it. And make sure you get into something that's not, you're barely making it, but you can make it. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. Read on. Go no, back to Titus so I can finish up, son. And then give me Thessalonians. Let's walk by the same rule real quick because my clock is ticking. Who give me the correct time? Back in Titus chapter what is 2. 236. All right, come on, William. Back in Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. Finish it up. The aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Yeah. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. <laughs> yes. That they may teach the young women to be sober, be to sober, love their husbands, love your husband, to love their children. Love your young and to be discreet. Chase keepers at home. Keepers at home. Good. Your house may get dirty sometimes. You got yeah. kids. The kids tear up everything. But my Lord, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be a, a hoarder. <laughs> That's right. Now, I understand if the place you're in is too small and stuff just get too, you know, just too crowded, too congested. That's something different. Yeah. I mean, deliberately just be dirty. Right. You know, it shouldn't be a 20-year-old chicken bone on your ground. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. And... Uh, until even, even the marrow done left the bone. Amen. Shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be a petrified piece of bread on the, on the ground. That's right. Until if you throw it, it'll knock the paint off the wall. Real quick. To be discreet, chase keepers at, keepers home. at home. Good. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. Be sober minded, young man. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Uh oh. In all things, show yourself an example, young brother. In doctrine, showing... Wait, 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 wait now. In all things. Wait a minute, young brother, in all things. Showing thyself a pattern of good works. Don't be leading no sister on. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's no, right. No. That's right. Don't you be leading no sister on. Stop crying over every girl. Girl, break up with you. All right, let her go. Let her go. That's right. Let her go, I say. I say. Let her go. That's right. She ain't your wife. Let her go. Let her go. Don't be walking on your knees, holding your hands out, yelling, please. No, 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 no. Don't go getting James Brown on you now. No, no. Let her go. That's right. My Lord, my Lord. That's right. 
Are you listening? Amen. Am I right, Harris? Glory to God. What did he say? In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. A pattern. An example. A pattern. You look at the pattern as a good track record That's right. <laughs> of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness. Wait a minute. Strive to live up to the expectation that the doctrine, that the doctrine of God requires. That's right. Mm -hmm. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness. Yes. Gravity. Gravity means low. Yeah. Humble. Don't exhaust yourself. Let God exhaust you. That's right. That's right. And the Lord exalt. That's good. Thank you, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus. Sincerity. Wait a minute. Now. <sighs> People have took this word and overdone it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm a very sincere man, but I'm a down to earth man. Amen. That's right. In other Amen. words, if you're so sincere, you can't even smile. Something's wrong with you. Something's wrong. Have you ever met people that are so serious, they're just righteous over much? Over much. You ain't got to quote scriptures every time I see you. No, no, That's no. right. No, no. No. That's right. That's right. I don't even like brothers that travel with me like that because that's, that's just hypocritic. Yeah. You travel with me, just be yourself. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Am I right, William? Amen. You might as well just be yourself. That's right. Sit around and try to strike up a Bible conversation 24 hours a day, and you know that's not what you do. That's not what you do. That's right. I remember when brothers first started traveling with me some up. Wanted to talk about Paul, wanted to talk about Peter, and I was sitting in the airport just quiet, and they was quoting that scripture, just quoting that scripture, and I, inter I interrupted. I said, just a minute, brother. Let me ask you something. You do this every day? <laughs> I ask him, you do this every day? He said, oh, no, Pastor Dennis, but, you know, you're here. The other brother looked at him and said, you don't know, babe. You don't know PJ. I'm, I'm your brother. Yeah. I'm your overseer, but I'm your brother. I would probably be the most down-to-earth overseer you would ever meet. That's true. I don't, I don't think of myself no higher than they ought to think. That's right. If I'm asking you. You, you talking about the cars and whatnot. I don't need you to quote no scripture. That's right. <laughs> I'm talking about business and real estate. I don't need you to come quote no scripture. Amen. Let's just talk about business or just having a regular casual so, conversation. Yeah. I don't need you to quote no scripture to me. That's right. That don't mean you're spiritual. You can be overzealous for all I know. That's true. You mean to tell me you can't have a simple conversation? I may want to talk about a box of cereal or something that I like. That's true. Amen. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. I may want to talk about the, you know, uh, Captain Crunch with Crunchberry. Amen. Amen. Or some waffles or let go my egg or something. Right. Yeah, I'm talking about how good it is. And here you come, the Bible said to pull what you have with you all the way. We ain't talking about that. <laughs> It sounds funny, but I know people like this, yeah. and I have to pull the plug from under them. Now they're normal. <laughs> Am I right, William? That's right. Am I right, William? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on. Come on, brother. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness. Showing uncorruptness. Gravity. Gravity. Sincerity. Sincerity don't mean you can't smile. That's right. You always walking around looking like a wildebeest. Yeah. I remember I heard one bishop say, when you laugh, you're of the devil. And here's the Bible say, God laugh at their calamity. The calamity. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. That's when you're just overdoing the scripture. Over Don't God. overdo it. You know how hard it is to live holy? <laughs> Don't Don't go put... Give me the 15th chapter of this Bible. The 15th chapter of Acts, real quick, so I can knock off. Right. I don't want to put no more on the people That's than right. what's, necessary. what's necessary. And I'm going to show you in the Bible that says this. That's right. right. 
brothers came saying you're not saved unless you're circumcised by the law of Moses. And the apostles had to put everything in check. In the book of Acts chapter 15, we'll start at verse 27. Listen at this. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you these same things by mouth. Yes. But it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. Oh, that's what matters to me. That's it. God gets satisfaction out of this, then so do I. That's right. It seemed good to the Holy Ghost. And to us. And to us. To lay upon you no greater burden. To not to lay on you no greater burden. Than these necessary things. Than what's necessary. That's it. In other words, I am not going to put no more on you right. than what's required That's to right. get into the kingdom. That's right. I can't put you in hell for something that God didn't put you in there for. Amen. I right. can't do it. Never mind personal feelings, I can't. No. Never mind what you've been taught, I can't. That's right. I want you apostolic preachers to consider your contradictions. You told the church, it's a sin for you to go to a basketball game. But yet you play basketball with your kids. Amen. Mm. You toss the ball back and forth with your kids. Yeah. But you tell the kids if you go to a game, they're going to hell. Then you and your child is going to hell. That's right. You told them it's a sin to ride the bike. Yet we got churches in foreign countries where saints is poor, and they ride bikes by thousands in India right. and in Asia as a form of transportation. Right. That's right. You know, a lot of bishops make scriptures just fit them. Yeah. I noticed this. Scriptures just fit them. Yeah. It's all right when they do it, but it's wrong if you do it. And right. yet you do the same thing they're doing. Amen. Amen. You are a hypocrite. A hypocrite. Mm. Yeah, the church got to be re-educated. Yeah. Because you know what came from the pulpit 99% of the time? Personal views, personal feelings, and opinions. And Bishop have allowed even some followers to get in their ear. Why well, don't you consider this? Make it doctrine. Yeah. And to please him or her, who's a big tie contributor, they do it. Right. I wouldn't care if you gave a 10,000 pound hog as tithing. That's the big, Bible big. speaks plain. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. You hear that? Amen. Whatever is necessary. That's right. Because it's tough living holy. Don't tell me nothing, man. It's hard. It's hard. I'm not going to strain a gnat and swallow a camel about nothing. That's I'm going right. to go to the Bible for everything. That's right. I have to do this. I'm going to go to the Bible for everything. For everything. And let the people know there's a difference between rule and apostles' doctrine. Right. Doctrine won't change. Rule can change. But rule can never contradict the doctrine. That's it. I'm not going to tell you you only can wear six or seven colors. I'm going to tell you the Bible says be modest. Be modest. I'm not going to tell you you'll go to hell if you wear a print. That's right. And here you get beat up and you got all these prints on your face called bruises. All right. All right. <laughs> you got a print over your eye, a print in your jaw. Somebody say, I thought we couldn't wear no prints. Pray for me. I have to come with Bible. That's right. Why? If the Bible said there's nothing new under the sun and I got a doctrine in the 21st century that don't coincide with what the apostles had back then, right. yeah. I'm wrong. That's right. I want to say, but times change. That's true. But doctrine don't. That's right. Doctrine don't. Yeah. Times change, but doctrine don't. And if I say you will go to hell as a result of doctrine, it has to be the same doctrine of yesterday right. that's pulled over to today. That's right. That's right. Rules change to fit the time where we live. But the doctrine fit every time. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you now? For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. It seemed good to the Holy and Ghost. And to us. And to us. To lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Now, Bishop, if you're going to say this is necessary, then I want to know why. That's, that's right. another thing in church. You ain't allowed to ask questions. Right. You run around here doing stuff. You don't know why you're doing it. 
Yeah. You just doing it. But well, why are we doing it? Bishop said so. Oh, okay. Okay, nothing. <laughs> That's what got me in trouble in falsehood. God started dealing with me. I was at Bishop's office door. The moment he stepped out the pulpit in that big old white robe swaying. Because in the church I came out of, we didn't have one person to read. They used to give out scriptures to about 25 different people. Everybody read for the preacher. And I remember I went to the preacher one day. I may have been about, oh, man, 13, 14. I said, uh, can I make a suggestion? He said, yeah, Brother Gino. I said, besides giving out a bunch of scriptures, just let me read for you. I said, in fact, we ain't got to call no scriptures. I get a scripture to fit whatever you're teaching. He said, you can do that? I said, I most certainly can. And I remember the preacher came down and he said, all right, we're going to stop giving out a bunch of scriptures. Brother Gino going to read. And I was diving all into the Bible. But what happened was, <laughs> what happened when he started lying, mm-hmm. I, I was reading what was totally opposite from what he was saying. Right. And he knew what we was reading was in contradiction of the lies he was telling. Right. It got so bad, he said, don't, don't you get another scripture. <laughs> he said, don't get one unless I call for That's it. Right. That's right. And then he came down. He started preaching lies, and I was right at his office door. And I, and I learned, you can't talk to the old timer, even if they're wrong, like you know. So you go to them like you don't know. That's right. So I went to him like I didn't know, sat and talked with him. I said, you said such and such and such a thing. But the Bible says such and such and such a thing. He used to have my mother up teaching what they call Sunday school. She was teaching the men and women. Mm-hmm. My mother. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Man, she was a loud something too. My mother be walking around with her lips balled up. Don't you see what the Bible said? Oh, the Bible. I'm like looking. Wait, wait, wait. I went upstairs and knocked on my former bishop's office. I said, I thought you teach us that something not a woman to teach you know, the use of authority over the man but to be in silence. He said, yeah. I said, then why is my mama up teaching Sunday school? Mm. It didn't make a difference if it was my mama. I wanted to know what the, the Bible said. The Bible, Amen. right. And that thing shook him. He said, well, who put her up there? I said, you did. <laughs> All right. You put her up there. Yes, yes. So he took the slick way out. Besides admitting he was wrong, he just shut down all the so-called Sunday school. Slick way out. He wouldn't say he was wrong. He just shut it down. Then God started dealing with me in my youth. Oh, yes. Giving me a revelation and understanding of scripture. Then we was preaching things that he never preached. And in my youth, I trained Williams. We grew up together. Once he got out of the three guard stuff, we was training him. That's right. Him and I would talk every day. He lived down the street from me. We grew up together. Yeah. And I was teaching him Jesus Christ as God. This is every day. That's right. Old Testament to New Testament, showing him what scriptures court in these. That's right. Every day. Then when he came out to Trinitarian and came into false apostolic church I was in, then when I was ministering in my early teens, he was my reader then. Yeah. Yeah. We were just young boys. That's right. We was just young boys. Yeah. Amen. He was reading for me then. Yeah. It wasn't until I started pastoring, it wasn't until I started pastoring, then the Lord moved on me to lay hands on him. Hallelujah. And then his entire reading skill changed. Amen. 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 So, growth is a gradual process. You're not going to master what God say do overnight. Don't even think it. But never get content without nothing. That's right. Have that zeal and that longing for God. 
Don't sit and try to judge nobody in church. Don't look at nobody. Come to God for yourself. Amen. Don't compete with nobody in church. Take your eyes off everybody in church. Look at you. That's right. And do you. That's right. Mind your business. Leave everybody else's business alone. Focus on yourself. Don't you worry about another person's weakness and another person's strengths. Yeah. Focus on your weaknesses and improve them. Focus on your strength and enhance them. Right. Wonderful. Right. Wonderful. Are you listening? Amen. Don't rejoice when your brother or sister fall. Because your day of falling will come. Oh, yes. Amen. Somehow, some way. Yeah, that's true. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Same thing you're rejoicing over over somebody else, you may end up being in the same predicament. Yeah. Yeah. And got to fight to get out. Yeah. And it may take you longer to get out than the other person. That's true. So if you're on your high horse, like you're more holy than thou, get off your high horse and just get on your donkey with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. 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 Are you listening? Amen. Close out with Thessalonica. Let us all walk quickly. In the book, the book of, of Philippians. Colossians, I beg your pardon. Corinthians? Philippians. Philippians, all right. In the book of Philippians, chapter 3 and at verse 16. That's it. That's what I want. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained. Yes. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Here in this scripture, rule means doctrine. Because if it says walk by the same rule, that means by the same teaching that lay rules to govern God's people that governs the church. That's right. Let us all walk by the same instructions. Let us walk by the same teaching. Let us walk by the same preaching. Let us walk by the same regulations. Let us mind the same thing. Wait a minute. Let, let us be mindful yeah. of the teaching. Then we'll be perfectly joined together in the same mind and same judgment. You just don't want to talk love. That's right. Be the real thing or get out the way. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Mind your mouth. Don't be a busybody. Don't be a gossiper. Yeah. Don't use nobody. Yeah. I have no respect for a brother or sister that'll use anyone. Amen. Yeah. Amen. These are subjects that are taboo in churches. They don't deal with it. That's true. The only thing they deal with in the apostolic Jesus Christ is God and dress a certain way. Man, if that's all you got, you so far behind, it's pitiful. Yeah. We want to update you and download the truth to you. That's right. Huh? That's right. Download the truth to you. Amen. Listen. Brethren, be followers together of me. What? Brethren, be, be fo followers together, together of me. Of me. And mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Do you hear that? Mm. Take your time and learn. That's why some of you need to leave the country and go visit the other temples. Yeah. See the difference of culture. That's right. I had some sister pull me to the side. She said, Pastor Jennings, uh, can I ask you a question? Why you don't teach the people, the sisters, to wear cotton stockings? I said, because it's not in the Bible. <laughs> That's right. She said, I never thought of that. <laughs> I said, cotton stockings was a rule set by Bishop Johnson in his organization. I said, believe it or not, he didn't always teach it. She said, what? I said, no. I got pictures of Bishop Johnson that was given to me from the 1930s. And if you look at that congregation, you thought you was looking at Bible way. You thought you was looking at Bible way worldwide. It wasn't a cotton stocking on nobody. See, I don't do what a lot of these other bishops do. Ain't no woman or man going to come influence me, right, right. give me their opinion, and then I do it. That's it. Right. That's Amen. right. Amen. We lay down something that got to coincide with both. That's right. Because the Bible said the poor you have with you always. So therefore, what about folk who can't afford those stockings? Yeah. yeah. It ain't none of our sisters in India got stockings. Why? They can't afford none. They ain't wearing those stockings in 115 degrees. No none. No. And I mean none. The way they dress over there ain't like the way you dress here in America. That's right. But the sisters' dresses and skirts are so long you can't even hardly see their feet. Amen. 
We've got over 50 churches in South India, over 100 in East India. Dresses come all the way down to the floor. Then we got areas of Africa, women and men, poor. We send clothes to cover their body, not to try to dress like folks here in America. To cover them. We don't send them winter clothes. They don't have no winter over there. That's right. You don't need no overcoat in Zambia. (laughs) Are you listening? Amen. The Bible just said, adorn yourself in modest. Modest apparel. And it's my job to teach this on scriptural order, not according to what somebody else done. I'm not interested in what nobody else done. I'm interested in what the word of God said. That's right. Amen. I'm going to say, well, if the Bible said walk by the same rule, then shouldn't you have the same rule as Bishop Johnson had? No. no. We should have the same doctrine. Thank you. But I got God permission to be different in administration. Right. Now let's get Bible for it. Amen. Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll start at verse 5. That's what? And there are differences of administration. There are differences. Of administration. Of administration. But the same Lord. He and I got the same gods. That's right. But the way he ran things and the way we run things are different. Different. But we have to make sure that the running of the administration don't contradict doctrine. That's right. Now do you see what I'm talking about? And there are diversities of operation. Diversity. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. Amen. That's it. That's right. I remember years ago when I was a child, I heard a Bishop Randolph Goodwin was laying one of the sisters out over the air. You know, a straw hat got little holes in them. He rebuked the sister. He said, I want no sister. Saw a sister with a hat. And it had little holes in it. Don't want no holes. A straw hat got holes. He said, when I see little holes in your hat, that's a little lust. That's an opinion. That's an opinion. How in the world little holes in a hat going to be a little lust? Amen. That's an opinion. You see, you can tell people that who don't know Bible. We come along and demand Bible for all this stuff. That's right. We ain't going to have nobody just doing something and you don't know why. That's why we open the floor for question. You can know how to serve the Lord. A little hole in your hat and you probably got holes in your t-shirt. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's right. Us brothers got lapels, got, la- hole, got a hole in your lapel, yeah. a hole to button. Right. Oh, the little lust. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I, I can mark any of them. <laughs> little lust. No, it's not. No, it's no, not. It's not. No, 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 no. That is not lust. No. And then people who don't know the Bible. That's right, Bishop. Amen. Read it right with him. Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a little lust. Not a little lust. It's not. No. Have knowledge before you say amen to something. That's right. That's right. The Bible says say amen to the truth. Don't say amen to something because it sounds good. Have knowledge first. Say amen after. I'm telling you, brother, a lot of stuff ain't never had nothing to do with Bible. False church I came out of, the preacher went so far out of the Bible, you would think the Bible didn't exist. He forbid us young brothers to even get married. He said God gave him a revelation. You know, there's three type of eunuchs in the Bible. Eunuchs made of men, eunuchs that are born, them that have made themselves a eunuch for the kingdom of God's sake. So he set up an auxiliary, you know, like usher board and all that, called the eunuch area. <laughs> yes, he did. 
And here is my father and mother been married for years, and there's eight of us. He looked at my father and said, Bishop, you got to leave Sister Jenny and be a eunuch. My father looked at him and just said, hmm, bless the name. <laughs> my mother had to catch herself. She yelled out, not here, buddy. <laughs> yes, she did. She said, not here, buddy. My Lord, but I was young. And when he tossed that out, he told me, Brother Gino, you can't get married. You got to be a eunuch. He said, if God ever make you an apostle, you can't get married. I sat in quiet. Oh, I couldn't wait for the benediction. He got up in that office. I was right behind him. I said, let me ask you about the eunuch area. He was sitting there with a big bowl of fruit. He said, when you're an apostle, he said, when you are an apostle, you'll be able to eat fruit like this. <laughs> I'm telling you, I came out of some crazy stuff. Man, you want fruit, just go to the supermarket, that's all. That's all, just that simple. Go to the supermarket, get all the fruit you want. Just that simple. I said, you say you're an apostle? And now you said to be an apostle, you can't marry he said, that's right. He was the one that I first heard of this Bishop Johnson from. I never even heard of Bishop Johnson. He used to talk about him all the time. I said, you said Bishop Johnson was an apostle. He said, that's right. I said, was Johnson married? He said, yes. I said, you said you're an apostle. I know you married because you're my uncle. <laughs> I said, then uh, Peter, I know he was married because the Bible says the Lord healed his mother-in-law. I think about the time, I was maybe 15 or 16. I said, so when did God change it? He said, God did it different for us three. <laughs> I said, well, God said, then I got the scripture. He said, I'm a God that changed not. And for this cause, the sons of Jacob should not be consumed. He jumped up from that desk and started banging on the desk. That's your problem. You bewitched. You always want Bible for something. Mm -hmm. Then he told me something that I'll never forget. He said, you are never long as you live. Find a church that believe all the Bible. All right. All right. I was told this by a so-called apostle. That's right. Which was an admission that he didn't believe all the Bible. Right. You don't believe all the Bible, you may as well get ready to die and go to hell then. That's right. So the more God dealt with me, the more I was at his office door, knocking, knocking, knocking. Bible said this, Bible said that, Bible said the other, Bible said the other. Then when God started opening up my understanding, when Williams and I was young boys, yeah. I began to teach him about God. Yes, you did. Manifesting the flesh, oh. stuff he never heard, Christ being the title of God, right. and Jesus being the name of Christ. Yeah. And I remember when Hinton <laughs> asked Williams a question. And uh, asked William, who is Christ? Mm -hmm. And Hinton never taught this. So William stood up and looked at me. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, I'm dead now. <laughs> All right. William said, Christ is Jesus. Hinton asked him, well, what's the name? William said, Jesus is the name and Christ is the title. Right. Hinton stopped and said, who taught you that? <laughs> William said, uh, Gino did. <laughs> G Gino did. Man, Hinton looked at me. Didn't I tell you don't be teaching something that I never taught? That's right. He said, I don't care if it is Bible. Imagine being told this. Now, I'm going through this 14, 15, 16. As a result, he set me down for a year. Yeah. Refused for me to preach and told the church, if I even catch you speaking to Brother Gino, I'm going to put you out the church. That's right. That's right. So I sat there. When he set you down, you wasn't allowed to sit on the front. He set you on the back seat. So I had to sit on the back seat. But I still came to church every time service was over. 
still came to church every Tuesday. You know, sometimes the brothers be talking to me, then when they hear the preacher coming down the step, they take off and run. <laughs> so they don't get in trouble. After the year expired, Hinton got me before the church. He said, you think you're going to preach what I preach? I said, I'm going to preach what the Bible says. He said, I didn't ask you that. Are you going to preach what I preach? I said, I'm going to preach what the Bible says. He said, all right. You want to talk about the Bible so much? I'm going to give you the chapter, and I'm going to give you the verse, and you're going to preach it. I said, all right. He got Genesis 1-1 and St. John 1-1. He gave me both scriptures. And he told the church, you better not say amen to him. That's right. Am I right, Will? Amen. Amen. So I read Genesis 1 once. And uh, that was before Williams was reading for me. I used to read for myself. I read Genesis 1 1, John 1 1. And then uh, the Holy Ghost started going to work. Yeah. And I probably was about 15 then. And God gave me a message that night, and the Holy Ghost fell in the church, and people came through speaking in tongue while I was preaching. Amen. And I was only about 15. Amen. That thing made my former bishop so angry, he jumped up and stopped me in front of everybody. Stop preaching. All of you stop clapping and don't say amen. He said, in fact, I'm going to give the benediction. Get out of the church. Leave. Take it. Take it. He forbid me to baptize anybody That's in the right. name of Jesus Christ. After that night, after being released from one year, sitting down, after that night, he set me back down again a whole nother year. <laughs> a whole year. Two years. <laughs> but he had no idea God Hallelujah. was showing me Hallelujah. this work during the whole time. Amen. <laughs> That's the thing that kept me from backsliding. That's the thing that kept me from backsliding. That's right. I was in my early teens, and God showed me this work. He never showed me when it would start, and he never showed me where. Hallelujah. Amen. He showed me the different countries. I told Williams about it. Yes, you did. I said, Williams, we're going to be in Africa, India, all across Europe. I said, we're going to have broadcasters covering the world. I'm 15 years old, sitting on my mama's steps telling him about this. Yeah. I said, we're going to have churches. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Churches all around the world. That's right. He said, really? I said, yeah. That's right. I said, we're going to have a fleet of buses. Yeah. He had stuttering real bad back then. He said, a fleet, 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 fleet? <laughs> I said, a fleet. <laughs> Yeah, I was a 15-year-old kid. That's right. That's right. But I heard from God. Hallelujah. It was 15. Hallelujah. It was 15 when I first fast, three days and three nights. It was on the second day when the Lord appeared to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It was on the second day Hallelujah. when God appeared to me. The second day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was just 15. A few years later, about 16 or 17, God moved on me to fast seven days and seven nights. Yes. At the end of my fast, I was about 90 pounds. Hallelujah. Seven days and seven nights. Hallelujah. I was down. Hallelujah. Glory. I was down to skin and bone. I prayed Hallelujah. every hour of the day. Hallelujah. I would go to the bathroom and just lay in a tub of water to relieve of pain. Hallelujah. My eyes ache. Hallelujah. 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 No, no one meal a day. No water. Seven days. Hallelujah. Seven nights. Talking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talking to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Bless the great name of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This work that we are now doing, Jesus. we ain't take over somebody's organization. Hallelujah. The God of Abraham appeared unto me in my early teens and atomized everything 
that we are doing right now. Yeah. That's right. Everything. Yeah. That's right. And I told Williams about it. Yes. Told Brother Ravenel about it. Told Dottie about it. We wasn't even married. I told her about it. Told my mother about it. Told my brother Deke about it. They couldn't see it. They could not see it. But this was shown to me over 45 years ago. That's why I tell you, viewers, that you can never do anything about this. No, I say never. I mean never. God spoke to us. That's right. Hallelujah. Go and say God. God spoke to us. Very few people can say somebody told them something that God said. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they see it come to pass. That's right. Yeah, but he and I, two young boys, yeah. sitting outside my mother's steps, my father's steps. And here I'm 15, 16, telling him about today. That's right. Literally telling him about the, the travel and the That's churches. Right. One of the visions that God gave me that stand out in my mind because I'm, li- I'm seeing it now. I was standing in an open field preaching the word of God, preaching from the 15th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. Then come at the end when he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father. And I was in an open field, and there was a podium and a microphone, and I didn't see nobody. But while we were preaching, in my mind, I knew there had to be people out there. I saw land, I saw mountains, but I didn't see no people. But we kept preaching. Next thing I know, I saw dust as far as I can look. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As far as I can look, dust like a stampede. And that cloud of dust was getting closer and closer and closer. And when it got close enough, it was people. It was so Many people. If I look to the left, as far as the eye can see, if I look to the right, hallelujah, as far as I can see, hallelujah. it was people from everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. And we're living that now. That's right. That's right. I remember we'll go somewhere and baptize two and three people in a meeting. Now you go somewhere, several hundred. Yes. In one day. One day. It's the Lord's doing. Hallelujah. It's the Lord's doing. We're not out here on our own. No, no. You know, most men all of a sudden get a calling when they got a disagreement with a bishop. That's right. That wasn't my case. No. Hallelujah. No, no. Long before I had a disagreement, God appeared to me, and I told my former bishop about it. I told him all about this work. He stood behind that desk and looked at me. He said, God ain't told you nothing. He said, God haven't spoken to you and God haven't appeared unto you. He said, if I don't raise my hands and bless you, you another amount to nothing. I never talk back. He said, but being that God showed you so much like you claim, where is this work going to start? I said, I don't know. He said, God never told a man to go somewhere. He don't know where he's going. I said, he told Abraham. God told Abraham to go, and the Bible said Abraham didn't know where he was going. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everything we are doing today. Everything. God showed me over 45 years ago. That's why you hear me say over the air, everywhere the truth of God goes, Victory is already ours. It's it's already ours before we get there. It's ours long before we get there. We can go somewhere one time where it would take many preachers 5, 10, 15 years just to get 10 people. Amen. We go somewhere and preach the word of God by God's permission and have a whole congregation first trip. It's the Lord's doing. That's right. 
Oh, oh no, we, we're not out on our own, hallelujah, no, on no. our own at all. No, no. This is something that was clearly shown and demonstrated to me with such clarity. Mm. Amen. That's why I'm determined. Hallelujah! I'm determined. God knows I'm, I'm determined. I remember Byron said to me one day, and you determined with that big grin. You determined to do it like the Bible. I said, Byron, I'm determined to do it right. When I look at all these young people, all these young people anxious just to hear teaching. That's right. That's right. That's rare today. today. So we won't lay no burden on you, but what's necessary, necessary. for your salvation and for your protection. God has given this generation an opportunity to see something they ain't never seen in their lifetime. To see the hand of God in something and then God manipulate it for his glory. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I told the brothers we're going to have a fleet of buses and God has given them to us. Went to a bus company, COVID hit, they had a whole fleet of MCIs. I told them I want all of them. <laughs> I did. I had some 07s with low mileages. And I said, I want two of them. MCI is about 40, 55, or 65 passengers, whatever. He said, oh, well, he said, they usually run over $100,000. I said, I'll give you 45000 for both of them. <laughs> he said, Rev Rev Reverend Genos, we're taking a loss. I said, are you using them? He said, no. I said, you going to keep paying insurance? He said, no. I said, then give him up. All right. And you know what he did? Yeah. Called me two hours later. He said, they're yours. <laughs> I went back again. Uh, I said, what else you got on the lot? He said, I got some more 07s. I said, uh, I'm going to get them two by twos. He said, what you going to offer me for these? I said, 40000 <laughs> He said, for one? I said, no, both. <laughs> went back again. He called me. He said, well, you ready to come back? I said, yeah, I'll be back. How many more you got left? He said, about seven. I said, well, they ain't going nowhere. We'll be back. <laughs> Great to start our own trucking company for the check. Amen. 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 When I first made the announcement, I want all brothers and sisters that got their CDLs and our dispatchers and diesel mechanics and everything, contract negotiators. I wasn't even expecting that many. Mm. Went up in the minister's room of council last convention. Man, they was, they was all over the place like ants. <laughs> I, had an, I just had a large team. First name we chose, well, I told them Righteous Transport. My lawyer put a search out. Too many people had similar names. I said, that's all right. Way of holding this transport. He put that together. He said, oh, nobody got that. I said, I, I, said, I know. Ain't, ain't too many people holding. <laughs> Amen. Amen. By faith, went and bought a trailer and bought a Volvo truck hooked up to the trailer. Already got it. Sitting on the church lot. One truck already been lettered. Next track, the trailer ready to be lettered. Amen. We want to have our own tractor trailing company. And we also want to grow our own produce. Amen. 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 So I have, to, I have to pull a call out for all brothers and sisters that know farming. I know how to eat what grow on the farm. So one mother came to walk with the truth, Mother Rose. I thank God for her. She gave the church about 33.11 acres down in Georgia. Got wild turkeys on it. About 10 acres already got clear land, had a pond on it. Gave it to the check. Amen. So I need brothers and sisters that know how to farm. Got to know what you're doing. Got to know when to plant. I don't know when to plant. 
I know when to plant scripture. That's right. All that other stuff I don't know nothing about. God know how to plant, plow. Real estate is my field and architect and building. I want to foreclose on some buildings so we can grow our produce and then have our own market. Amen. Have our own supermarket. Have our own building where all our trucks can drive in and have our own mechanics to fix our own trucks and our own business, our own buses. Wonderful. This is what I'm looking to do all across this country. Wonderful, wonderful. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yes, Lord. I'm not into sitting back doing nothing. Yeah. A church sit there for about 20 and 30 years and nothing is done? Nothing. No. I got to see something materialize. I'm a progress junkie if I use that word. Yeah, yeah, I amen. got to see things happening. Yeah. Amen. And then God got to give you a vision to make it happen. Make it. That's right. That's right. All we need is something simple, cooperation. Amen. Amen. So all of you that are watching, that have knowledge of farming, I want to say to all my web holiness transport team, remember January, I believe the first, I believe it is, that Saturday of the closing year convention, either that's January the first or January the second, one of those days. But whatever that Saturday is of December's closing year convention, the first, January the first, we're going to have uh, another business meeting with all of you, all, uh, all my whole team. I need you to be there. Our meeting will be at 2 o'clock because service that Saturday is going to be at 4. And we're going to meet in the school so we can discuss. And I want my new secretary of the team to make sure you have your minutes so we can have, I want to refresh everybody of the board of directors and restructure some things and things of that nature. And I want to start organizing for next year our agricultural team. We want to grow. Grow our own potatoes and our own vegetables and our own fruit. Grow them and then get our tractor trailers to haul them. Yes. Haul them and set them up in our stores. I mean, all across the country. We got churches across the country. We may as well have businesses where the churches are. Right. Amen. Amen. That way folks that's not working, we can employ them. And pay them. That's right. We ain't going to have you working and don't pay you. Amen. These young folks' jobs so they can work. Amen. Let them work. So I, I, I don't have a narrow vision. Some folks say, you dreaming. Okay, that's what you want to call it. <laughs> I'm one that believes in making things happen by God's help. That's right. Amen. I don't tolerate someone sitting telling me, uh, you thinking too big. I ain't paying you no mind. No. My former bishop told that lie. He said, all these churches you talking about having in a big headquarters church and all that stuff. He said, that'll never happen. Mm -hmm. He was up against God. That's right. God done spoke to me before I spoke to that fella. Amen. And God's been speaking to me ever since. That's right. And I bear witness, God have not failed Hallelujah. in one thing he told me. That's right. Not one. Hallelujah. Not one. Now I know there's some old social media saying, he just saying that to convince the people. I ain't trying to prove nothing to you. I don't give two cents about what you're thinking. Don't mind telling you. That's right. They get mad when I talk like that. One person said, he preached full of pride and arrogance. I don't care what you call it. That's right. I preach the word of God and hit you where you don't like it. That's right. We not only want to be successful spiritually, I believe that the church can be successfully naturally. Naturally. Certainly we can. That's right. That's Ain't right. nobody going to make me believe otherwise. No. All this talent and skill we got, we're going to use it for God's glory. God's glory. All right, you that are here, you might as well get ready to leave your churches and pack up. All right. That's it. Get saved the right way. Right. Repent of repent. your sins. Right. Be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ and get your sins washed away and come out your false church. 
Anybody want to be baptized the right way in the name of Jesus Christ? Stand on your feet if you want it. Look at here. Look at that. Stand on your feet if you want it. Come on. All of you that are standing, let's go out that right out there. All of you that are standing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Amen. 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 Come on, Jones and Harris. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. It's the Lord's doing. I told you folks, I've never saw nothing like this. Never. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Never saw nothing like this. Never. We glorify God. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is truly the Lord's doing. Amen. Amen. Lewis, Denny, Byron, this is the Lord's doing. Amen. It's marvelous in our eyes. Bishop Williams is marvelous, isn't it? Marvelous, simply marvelous. It's the Lord's doing. My young brothers and sisters, and to all of you, we thank God for all of you. Take your time. Learn. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in nothing and nobody. Learn. Take your time and learn. Stay away from church cliques. All the way. Never mind who been in first church longer than you. Don't pay that no mind. Stay away from church clicks. All right, let us all stand. Brother Minister Evans will close us out in prayer. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Let all the church say, Amen. Amen.